United States. She has a deep passion for this organization as she served as a District 10 Vice President from 2011 to 2012 and the State President from 2012 to 2013. Rumor has it she apparently rapped in her farewell speech. Perhaps we'll get a glimpse of that tonight. Her stories and experiences are certainly out of the ordinary for your average 22 year old. So without further ado, please put your hands together and help me welcome Ash Narain. to be here. I know it's been a long, long day, cold, rainy day, my hair can you tell, uh, but I hope you bear with me for a little bit because I hope I can instill some motivation, some excitement, something during your time here. And especially because this isn't the first time I've been here. <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo with Colorado FBLA. But before I get started talking about <laughs> me, we're going to talk about what I'm here to tell you all about. Today, I'm going to talk about two distinct types of individuals, and then we're going to talk about you all, the future business leaders of America. Okay, back to me. So, as you can see, that was the, my state officer team. From 2011 to 2012, I served as the District 10 State Vice President. And then the following year, I served as a state president. I remember having to be in this very arena at five o'clock in the morning to prepare for closing session. I was a little late, if I'm not gonna lie. Sorry, state advisors. <laughs> However, I remember a few days prior, we had to, I had to come in and rehearse my speech, my farewell speech as state president. And I went up to the stage manager at the time, his name was Sean. I was like, Sean, I'm about to do something completely out of the ordinary. If this sounds like, let me know, and I'll recite it in a different manner. So as she had mentioned earlier, I'm not really much of a rapper, but I sure did rap in that speech. <laughs> I don't think I ever stood on stage in front of a crowd that big before. And I went through that speech so many times and tried to memorize it in the shower and in the car, that I still haven't memorized four years later. So yeah, you're absolutely gonna get a little bit of a snippet of it right now. <laughs> Hear me rap first and then let me know if you wanna cheer. <laughs> this girl picked up a mic, that's right. I'm flowing to the crowd's delight. It's nice, it's tight, I feel all right. There's turn you on just like a light. We're shining so bright, y'all looking so clean in your suit and tie just like JT. Now stop, hold up, let me break from the top. This is a journey and I never want to stop. But all good things must come to an end. Looking at the crowd and all us your friends. We're a to group, we're family. We give each other up, call it trust therapy. Likely leaders at the goal every day. And they become reality at the LA. I played varsity soccer for Legacy High School in Brookville, Colorado. So like many of you, I had class until three, practice until six, went home, ate dinner, maybe did homework, showered, and went to bed. The next thing I want you to know about me is I love traveling, although it's also my most expensive hobby. But I've been fortunate enough to live in five countries and have been to 19. In fact, I first learned how to speak when we lived in Scotland at the time. So imagine this little Indian girl with the most gnarly Scottish accent ever. It made no sense, <laughs> absolutely no sense. And then we moved to England and I had like this weird British Scottish accent. Still didn't make sense. <laughs> then we moved to the United States and that accent went away in about three weeks and I found myself listening to Luke Bryan and country music. It happens. I love it. I still love it. <laughs> and finally, I'm a local. I live in Denver. I attend the University of Denver, currently pursuing a bachelor and master's degree of accounting. In fact, I'm actually supposed to be in a grad class right now, so like many of you, 
I'm okay with being here instead of a classroom. <laughs> All right, enough about me. We're here to talk about you all. The future business leaders of America. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, whether you chose to come here because you wanted to miss a few days of school, you really, really wanted to qualify for nationals, which I hear is in Anaheim this year, that's cool. Uh, or you just want to interact with different people that you would never cross paths with otherwise. Regardless, you are here, right now, among one another. You are here to challenge yourself through competition, learn through workshops, and meet one another. That is an amazing opportunity. When I attended State four years ago, I met this girl named Taylor. She actually ended up being my state treasurer. Taylor had a graduating class of three people. Talk about everyone knowing a little bit about everyone. <laughs> I know family is bigger than that. But she enjoyed coming to State because she wanted to be in one room, one space, one arena, with a group of people 1,000% of her graduating class. You all are Generation Z. You all are educated, tech savvy, brilliant, idle, amazing, amazing titles. You all have better titles than a millennial, a better rep. However, that's all dandy, but it's not all good. However, the fact that you all are here today, you all are the exception to that rule. You all are the exception to that bad stereotype. So give yourself an applause for that, it's commendable. Friends from England 
after being separated for 11 years by the Atlantic Ocean. It is an amazing tool. However, not all of it's amazing. In fact, too much of it becomes a vice. Do you know why we get so excited about the number of likes we get and the number of followers we get? It's because social media has the ability to release this chemical called dopamine. It is that same chemical that is released when we have sex, drink alcohol, do drugs, gamble. So we have age restrictions on alcohol and drugs, but not social media. In fact, actually right now, I want you all to look at the person one seat down from you, two seats down from you, three seats down from you, or even you. And one of you all were on your phone just now.
See, as Generation Z, you're entering this working world where you have executives of some of the largest companies having the mindset of just hitting the bottom line, just making the numbers just a little bit, and they make it something simple, so complex. Unfortunately, fraudulent activity like this is still occurring today, right now, undetected, and that is absolutely terrifying. But, as the future generation, you have the ability to change that norm. Think about it. The next great social entrepreneur who will combat world hunger could be sitting in this arena right now. Yeah. Oh, think about this. The next great activist for women's rights could be sitting in the back corner right now. And guess what? That person is a man. So, I was curious. Why do people complicate scenarios when some things are just so simple? I don't have the answer for it, so what did I do? I googled it, because if you don't know the answer, Google usually does. And I get it, you know, this life is complicated, but I was still a little curious. I clicked on the very first link, and it said the reason why people make things complicated and lie is because they are avoiding the truth. They are avoiding the truth. Do you think those executives of MCI WorldCom knew that they weren't gonna make the numbers that quarter? Probably. Well, what did they do? Instead of taking the hit one quarter and bouncing back, they let it progress and they continued to lie quarter after quarter in hopes that it would ignore the initial problem. But it just made things worse. Be logical, be simple. Two simple phrases and I guarantee it'll help you in so many aspects of your life. Now the next group of individuals that I'm gonna to talk to you about took something very complex and made it simple. There we go, same slide I was talking about. This right here, these are two men, and they're called Dabba Wallas. Dabba means like tin or container, and Wala is kind of like the man portion of milkman, mailman. So these men deliver hot meals in India every single day to residents, offices, corporations, via railway systems and bicycles. You know, in fact, this system is so well known that professors at MIT and Harvard are recognizing this and are using them during case studies. So now you're probably wondering, what in the world do executives of a telecommunication company have to do with delivery men? I'll tell you. This is a 100-year-old service, utilizing the manpower and strong work ethic of 5,000 delivery men to deliver 200,000 hot meals every single day. Their payment plan? $10 a customer for one month of deliveries. Clearly, not enough for a 401k. You see, they deliver these meals in order to feed the mouths of their children, extended family, and wife. So what's stopping them from, instead of going to the customer, sending the food home and giving their family the container of chicken and rice? You see, this process is so intricate, requiring numerous handoffs, their days are longer than your nine to five, and there's no such thing as paid time off. So, back to MCI WorldCom. We had a group of guys trying to commit this act of crime. So what's stopping these double balls from doing the same, sending food home and mitigating these hard times? I mean, there's so many of them, so many meals delivered every single day. So what's the harm if just one of them decides to go a little bit astray? The answer is simple, moral, sound, and just. The reason why this delivery system works so well is because these men have instilled trust. And what has this trust led to? Happiness. Happiness for the customers, happiness for the business, and happiness for the dabababas. It's amazing, we make things complex, we try and simplify it, but 
at the end, we're just trying to be happy, right? So as Generation Z, I hope that this weekend, you all choose happiness. I hope you all try and ask yourself these very important questions. I want you to ask yourself, how can I make things simple while still being efficient? How can I do things that do not harness or harm affect <laughs> my, my morals, values, and ethics? What can I do, what decisions can I make that instill the trust of others have in me? Each decision you make every day sets the precedent for the next. Each decision you make has the ability to make you and those around you happy. So this weekend, I hope you instill trust. I hope you make things simple. I hope you don't overcomplicate scenarios. Instead of flying by your exam, Instead of just whizzing by our presentation so you can go hot tub with your friends, take pride in what you're doing. Because if you don't, the generation after you will blame your leadership. Don't give them a reason to do that. So, you all, you all are Generation Z. You're the techie, savvy, brilliant future business leaders of America. And now I am trusting you all to live up to that standard. Sorry, one more. Woo! All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah.